this year has been very weird and i think we've seen that with a lot of the luxury brands that particularly back in lockdown weirdly there was a lot of price increases going on and one in particular was chanel and i even had one of you write to me a couple of days ago and you were kind of talking about this so it's got me thinking before this year if i'm completely honest before this year, I was never particularly interested in pre-loved. I always preferred to buy new just because you had that kind of guarantee. You were the one that went and bought it. You've got all the receipts and things like that. Um, and also there was, uh, there was an element of, I don't want to get something and it potentially smells or is not what it was advertised to be. But I bought my first pre-loved bag in June I think it was and it was the Fendi Spy and I have just loved that and I felt that actually it feels quite nice to use a bag that somebody else has loved and enjoyed it feels quite nice particularly in this time where we're thinking about the environment the effect on that and um, just being a bit more conscientious so the question is is now the time to think about buying a Chanel bag pre-loved and not new and it's because this year they have had i think they're onto their third price increase as of today they've just done another one today and all in all the price increases this year range globally from around about seven percent to 25 percent which is really big and I, there are many reasons why i'm now at a point where I really don't feel like Chanel is worth it at all. I'm gonna to talk to you about that. I'm gonna show you some examples and I'm gonna show you the massive price saving that you can get now on these bags because I do think that they are reaching a point, you know, some of them are six, 7,000 euros. I mean, really, is it worth that? Or are you gonna go and buy an Hermes where you at least know they're that money for a reason? You know, they've built up that brand and they, they they're good bags to buy. So this is the Chanel Classic Flap in the jumbo size. This is the Chanel Classic Flap in the small size. I've done this in the wrong order because now I have a medium. This is the Classic Flap in the medium in a tweed. So if I, um, so if I show you those two, can you see the medium is like a tiny bit bigger? And then you've got the small, which is smaller again. Personally, if I were to buy this bag again, I wouldn't get it in this size because I haven't used it that much because the bag's actually quite heavy. And um, there's that. And also it's kind of too big actually for me now, but at the time I'd always wanted a jumbo. So I got that. If I were gonna get that again, I would probably go for the small, or actually maybe, maybe the medium. I'm also gonna talk about two other Chanel bags because in this, I'm trying to show you the different bags, whether they're better to get used or whether they're better to get new. And I'm gonna cover the Coco top handle and then also the trendy CC. Weirdly, you can still get a saving on these, but this one in particular sells for nearer the retail price than the classic flaps. Let's talk about these price rises. Chanel normally do, all of the brands do price increases several times a year. And I, I know that the Chanel always do one in early November because my birthday's in early November. And whenever I wanna go and look at Chanel, I've normally missed it by a couple of days, the price rises. So I, I know about the November one, and I think they normally have one in the spring. Now, here's my thing with it. Chanel are not gonna lose customers and I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm never gonna go and buy a new Chanel bag again. Not that there's anything I want right now, but in the future, if I walk in there and there's something that I'm like, oh, I really like that, then I would consider buying it new. Now, the problem I've got, and the thing that I, that I think is starting to kind of clash with it, is how much is too much for a bag? You've got different brands, and I feel that for those different brands, there are different ceilings that I feel are reasonable to pay. So I mentioned Hermes, I've never bought their bags because I don't love them enough, but their bags retail for a much higher price. But then a lot of you have told me that you you buy one of those bags and you can, in, you can pretty much instantly flip it for more than what you paid. Dior, I don't find that with. I found with Dior, whenever I have looked to buy Dior pre-loved, that you can get things 
quite a bit cheaper than if you were to go in store and in fact two years ago some of you might remember i bought this deal bag i liked it at the time but i kind of felt like it was going to be a trend and i saw it on best air collective and it was brand new the person had bought it from the 30 montaigne store it came with the receipts it actually hadn't been used and so that's a really good example of i think with that bag i saved nearly a thousand pounds just a bit under but with Chanel, they normally tend to do a bit better, but I feel like we're starting to see a bit of a change in that. I also don't feel that the quality of Chanel is worthy of the new prices. So if I show you this, I don't know if you can see, but on quite a few of the bags I've had from Chanel, um, the, the flaps don't sit exactly straight. And I have been told it's because they're handmade and stuff, but. I was gonna get, oh, I can't remember the name of it now, there's this little, it looks like this. I was gonna buy one of those about two years ago and I really liked it, but they didn't have one in store where the flap was actually straight on it and it was noticeably wonky. But the other thing is with these is that the quilting where it goes along here is meant to meet the quilting along here. It's meant to look kind of like one and I've, this doesn't actually do it. Can you see there? So you've got the bottom bit there of the diamond shape and then it should be at the top of this one below it but it's actually a, a third of the way down. Also uh, things to do with sometimes on the gold hardware, I've had it where after not very long the gold hardware rubs off which is actually why I kind of moved to silver, I quite like silver anywhere, I feel like it's a bit more contemporary for, for me. The older Chanel bags which I'm gonna go through in one second. A lot of the vintage ones, just you can tell, you can see the qualities better and the hardware, uh, I can't remember what date exactly. Someone help me out here. If you know the date that they stopped making the gold hardware, 24 karat gold, let me know. Let's take a look at some pre-loved. I'm gonna cover a couple of vintage classic flaps and then move on to uh, two newer ones. I feel like with the vintage, you can get a better deal. And it, and it does depend on whether you're happy with buying pre-loved or not. Some of you might not be into it, but I consider it. First is this. This is a vintage bag. It is in the medium size with gold hardware, 24 karat gold uh, plated. On Vestair Collective, I personally prefer to buy from professional sellers. So you've got different tiers. You've got individuals, experts and professionals and the kind of higher up the food chain you go the i feel like the more protection you get if something's up with the item or if you uh change your mind on it i think the way vesta collective works is that if you buy off an individual i don't think that you can get a refund is that true i've bought a lot in vesta collective but i've never had to ever return anything so i don't know but i think that might be the case so yeah this bag is £2,838, which if you take today's money of the cost of that bag, it's a saving of 2662 Now, because this is vintage and the price of this new, it, new would have been loads less because this is probably like a 90s bag or something, that saving difference isn't exactly correct but I am comparing it to today's money. So just bear that in mind. The second one, which is, it's a bit more money, but I've pulled it out because it comes with more accessories. This is pretty much the same again. It's a medium classic flap with the 24 karat gold um, hardware on it. The price they're asking for is 3,620, which is a saving of 1,880, but bear in mind as well, it's just like that previous one, this is a vintage, so the difference in saving is ob objective. This comes with the dust bag, authenticity card, serial number. It does have a dent on the inner flap, and because of that, I feel that this is a bag that you could probably get a deal on if you negotiated with the seller. I do find that the price people list things for is very different to the price that they sell for. And whatever I, whenever I wanna buy something, so I'm actually looking to get a black saddle bag at the moment, but I don't really wanna buy it brand new because it's, is it over 3,000 now? I want to get a vintage one and you can get some really good ones on there for under 900 pounds. And what I, people are asking for a lot more than that, but when I actually scroll down the list, 
of the listings for bags that like it and you get to the ones that have sold because they leave them on there. Have a look at recent ones that have sold because you'll find that the prices are all fairly similar. Two more, both of these are jumbo and at, different to those other two, both of these are new. And I wanted to give you an idea of, again, the savings that you can make on actually new bags. The jumbo, when I bought mine in 2016, this was, and it was overpriced at the time, it was the most I'd ever spent on a bag. And um, I did think many times about it, but I, I saved for it and I knew I wanted to get it. And I'd gone out that day with the intention of getting it. This was four and a half thousand in 2016 and it's now over 5,000 now. For some reason, I'm finding that the classic flaps pre-loved, you can, you can make a saving on it. Some other bags in Chanel, you can't, it's the opposite. But this one, this is a jumbo, it's a new style, it's got silver hardware, and it is 4,979 pounds, which is a saving of just a bit over 800. It's from an expert seller, comes with the cards and all of that, this is a, a UK bag. Now, another thing that um, is a tip for you, because I've been caught out by this before. If you are, um, if you're buying from abroad, we're still in the EU at the moment, so it's not a problem, but at the end of the year, it's gonna be a problem. If you buy, if you're in the UK and you buy a bag from someone in Europe, you won't pay customs. If you pay, if you buy a bag from someone outside of Europe, you will pay customs. I find that there are a lot of really good quality bags on Vest Air Collective and clothes and all sorts that are from um, Japan, Hong Kong. The amount that you will pay in tax is crazy and they add it on at the, at the checkout when you kind of check out with the bag. So I would always say uh, um, try and if you're in the States or whatever, there's a tab on the side and you can tick it and it says show me things from the States and that way you've got the choice of buying things that you won't have to pay customs on. So this is a UK bag. So anyone in the UK, you won't have to pay any tax on this. So that's quite a good bag to go for. I've already said that there are, the one bag that I personally would buy is that one that's like 2,838 that I showed you earlier. The other one is this. This jumbo is 3,973 pounds. That is a saving of 1,870. It comes with a dust box, it comes with the cards. It's from an expert seller. So as you can see, the price of these bags in the shop is starting to move away from the price of them uh, pre-loved. There was a point in time where I was looking for classic flaps because I wanted a medium one, just plain black. There was a point not so long ago where the pre-loved price was so much that actually there was no point in buying it pre-loved. You might, it's, I always think that whenever someone's asking for more than the new price and it's not an item that's hard to get, I always think, why are you doing that? Because I'd just rather go to the shop and buy it that way. But now things have changed and with these bags, um, it's slightly different with the minis. I have found that they um, hold their value, but with definitely with the larger size ones, you can get quite a good deal. This bag comes in three sizes. This is the mini size. It also comes with a chain top handle. With the classic flap, the chain top handle is non-removable. With this one, it is. So you can either use it as a top handle bag or you can connect this. Although this chain isn't actually long enough to be able to wear it cross body, but you can wear it on your shoulder. These bags, I do find that the smaller the bag, the more it holds its money. And I think it comes back down to current trends. Okay, so the mini top handle is now 3,120. The small is 3,300. And then the largest size is just a bit over 3,500. All of these prices, by the way, are correct as of today. If you go and look at these bags, people are asking for more than they cost new. And that people want like 4,000 pounds plus. This is what I don't get, is those bags for that money are hanging around. Scroll down and have a look to what things are actually selling for. And here's where you can get a good deal, but you might have to hustle it a bit. These bags in varying sizes sell for, for anywhere between the 2000s and the top end of 3000. That would be a really good deal to be able to get this bag for. So um, I think new, do I think that this is worth buying new? I actually do because I think compared to everything else, the price is still vaguely reasonable for 
what you're actually getting. But if you can get yourself this pre-loved and get it for in the 2000s or the top end of three, that's quite a nice saving. The trendy is different again. I've got it the wrong way around. This bag, pre-loved, there's not many of them that I found and they're selling for nearly the same price, if not a bit more, as they are new. But there's less of these on there. And again, I think it comes down to trends. Ironic, because it's called the trendy. At the moment, I don't, I don't see, let me know what you think. At the moment, I don't see the classic flaps as being as on trend as some of the smaller bags, micro bags and different brands and the trendy. I think the trendy is um, trending at the moment, but the classic flaps now is a good time if you've always wanted one. I think that now is a really good time to just have a look around, consider pre-loved. Pre-loved doesn't always mean that you're going to get something that smells and is really worn. Um, if you play the long game, sometimes you don't even have to. I, as I say, I've bought a bag before that was brand new. Have any of you, well even last year, have any of you started to consider pre-loved a bit more? And if so, why? What made you do it? And have you become a bit addicted to it? Because I feel like I'm getting that way actually.